Dr. Maria Victoria Mateos, MD at University Hospital of Salamanca in Spain, will discuss the treatment options for the early diagnosed elderly multiple myeloma patients. Dr. Mateos, could you explain why complete remission is an important objective in the treatment of my myeloma, multiple myeloma? Complete remission is, uh, should be an important objective of the treatment of patients with multiple myeloma. In the past, this was not an important objective because when we used the just malfalan plus prednisone, the complete remission rate was really very low, not superior to 2-3%. So complete remission didn't matter. However, now with the introduction of novel agents, we know that those patients who achieved hematological complete remission had a significantly longer progression-free survival and also a prolongation of the overall survival. So in elderly patients, complete remission should be always balanced with an acceptable toxicity profile, but complete remission should be the main objective of the treatment. Which options do we currently have to treat the elderly patients? Fortunately, we have uh, currently many different options to treat this patient population. We have uh, different uh, combinations based on alkylators and also combination based on non-alkylators. The combination based on alkylators are mainly based on melphalan, cyclophosphamide, or probably bendamastin, to which novel agents have been added, resulting in bortezomib with melphalan prednisone or melphalan prednisone plus thalidomide. However, the introduction of novel agents is linked to the introduction of free alkylators induction regimes, such as uh, lenalidomide plus low-dose dexamethasone, bortezomib plus dexamethasone, or even the combination of both proteasome inhibitors plus immunomodulatory drugs, but without any alkylator agents. So fortunately, we have uh, many different options, and we have uh, to choose the best option for each patient according to the characteristics of the disease. Okay, and which regiment is, in your opinion, the most promising one? I think that uh, there is not uh, any um, promising efficacy, promising induction regime, but uh, many different promising induction regime. We have uh, VMP, bortezomib melphalan plus prednisone, that uh, demonstrated to be clearly superior to MP many years ago, and it's commonly used around Europe and uh, Asia as a standard of care for this patient's population. However, it's important to know that we have a novel combinations emerging, such as selenidomide plus low-dose DEX. In fact, during this as meeting, the plenary session will present the results of lenalidomide plus low-dose DEX in comparison with MPT, showing probably that lenalidomide plus low-dose DEX would be superior to MPT. So we have uh, many different combinations. The most promising, I think that uh, there is not uh, any specific, and we have uh, a wide spectrum of uh, different combinations to be used. And should we abandon melphalon? My opinion is that uh, not yet, uh, because uh, melphalon has demonstrated to be clearly effective in the management of myeloma patients in general, young and also elderly patients. We have uh, now combinations in which uh, the alkylator can be avoided, of course, using lenalidomide plus low-dose DEX or bortezomib plus lenalidomide plus low-dose DEX. However, the availability of these new combinations don't, don't, don't indicate that we have uh, to kill directly melphalan. I think that melphalan should be continued taking part of the different induction regimes for elderly patients. Is there any role for maintenance therapy in this population? It's a, a complicated question because uh, the role of maintenance in elderly myeloma patients is not uh, so well consolidated and, as in young patients after autologous stem cell transplant. 
However, probably uh, the role of the immunomodulatory drug, the lenalidomide, the continuous treatment with lenalidomide, is uh, probably the results more consolidated, indicating that uh, the continuous treatment with the lenalidomide plus low dose DEX resulted into a significant benefit in the management of elderly patients with multiple myeloma. It is possible to use bortezomib as maintenance, but the results are more limited and it's much more difficult to extract uh, consolidated conclusions. Okay, and what can we do for the optimization of the treatment? The first important consideration to optimize the treatment is to well evaluate the performance status of the elderly patients. And for this purpose, it is not only necessary to evaluate the chronological age, but the biological age, comorbidities, disabilities, probably using uh, geriatric scales, easy geriatric scales, to consider if your patient is uh, fit, unfit, or frail. So you can probably choose the same combinations for all patients, but uh, with very careful and for unfit and for frail patients, doses of the different regimes should be optimized and should be modified because the final objective has to be that patients can remain on therapy, the planned schedule of therapy. And uh, you have to try to minimize the uh, toxicity profile because when elderly patients develop the grade three or four adverse events, uh, or even they have uh, to discontinue the treatment, the rate of death uh, significantly increased. So I think that uh, general status and optimization of the doses of the drugs are the best way to optimize the treatment. Okay, thank you very much for this interview.